So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna set up the paper to start working with the the proportions for the for the figure. Uh, and I'm I'm using eighteen by twenty four paper. You know, you can see there on the you can see here on the side. It's eighteen inches, and and it's like a standard size. Uh, uh, drawing pad, 18 by 24. And so what I've done and what I recommend you guys do is uh, we're going to make these gui guidelines. I already drew them on here, but just to make sure that you guys uh, see what I'm doing and to help you make the lines, you know, straight for you need a yardstick. And see what I've done, I have, uh, I have marked on the left side, uh, first I, I left uh, half an inch and I made a dash. And then from there on down, I marked every two inches, you know, at the two, at the four, at the six, at the eight, at the 10, at the 12, at the 14, at the 16. And then I, I did the same thing on the right side. You know, you can see there, you have a good view of my beard there with this with this camera uh, so half an inch from the top and then after that half inch every two inches make a dash at the two four six eight ten twelve fourteen at the sixteen and then using those two those two dashes I use my my ruler my yardstick It's, it's important that no, no matter what size paper you're using, that you leave half an inch or an inch, some space at the top. You don't wanna end up with the drawings right up to the edge of the, of the paper. Okay, so you, you uh, use those two dashes and you gotta make sure that they're accurate and then you draw the line going across here. I mean, I did this before class, but just uh, for, for the sake of being very clear about it, I'm gonna do it, do it again. And I'll try and make the lines even darker. So these guidelines are to help us understand the proportions to the, to the human figure. Drawing the, port, the portrait is challenging and it gets even more challenging once you start to deal with the whole human figure. You see, it's hard to keep the ruler, the yardstick straight. So that's why it's important to have those, you know, you just, it, unless you have a T-square, uh, that can make it easier. But having these two dashes uh, and having to connect them kind of facilitates making the straight line. And I find a lot of people are not used to using rulers and they have a hard time uh, handling a ruler. And this, we'll do a, a few drawings using this method here. I do was in the regular semester. We do this for about half the semester to really ingrain the measurements in your, in, in your mind. Uh, it kind of creates a type of a uh, muscle memory. So you go across. Do you guys have any questions so far? Samantha? Uh, no, I, I don't have questions. Okay. But I, I want to say that I like your ruler. <laughs> What's that? I like your ru your uh, ruler. Oh, yeah, it's a handy den. <laughs> Where do you get it? I don't know. I, I, it just came into my possession. <laughs> I, I'll show you later my favorite. This is what well, this this is a yardstick, right? I have a, I had a student, I think her son used to work at a, uh, I'm sure you've had, you've heard of uh, Chorizo San Miguel. 
or San Manuel. It's like north of Edinburgh here. It's a it's a very famous uh, brand of uh, chorizo, which is a type of a uh, <laughs> sausage. They have a meat plant up north of Edinburgh, and yes. I think her son used to work there. It was an older student, and she gave me the she gave me that ruler, and it says you know chorizo San Manuel. I think it's San Manuel, and that oh. I. Uh, I just like that it's like, that's one of my favorite breakfasts, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But that is my favorite ruler. Wow. And just you know, going down here. Uh, also, it's it's good that at the very bottom, like in in my case, I have like an inch or an inch and a half at, at the bottom left over. You don't want the figure also to end up right at the at the at the bottom of the paper. You want to have some space. And so what these sections represent are head measurements. Each one represents one head. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So there. And okay, make sure that you have some space at the top. You can kind of see it here on the camera. And then there's some space. It's hard to fit it within the camera, but there's some space way at the bottom here. And so you should have, uh, I'm gonna, so you have one space. Now make sure that when you number these, that you're numbering the spaces between the lines, not the lines themselves. See, so you, you write this between these two lines. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have eight spaces right now. And what they what these represent are, like I said, head measurements. So just to, you know, ingrain that in, your, in our minds, once you, once you do this, once you number it, on one side here, I want you to, uh, to make, to do this here. So this is, This is, represents the head, one head. I mean, it's a basic egg shape here. Two heads. And these will come in very handy as we start to, to draw the figure. Getting proportions right is one of the main problems uh, students have when they're when they start drawing the human figure. Is it make sure make sure that they start at the you know at at the top here and they touch the bottom as well. And take, I mean, take your time and do this as, as nice as you, as you can do these shapes. I think I'm going up slightly to the side here. So this, even though I have eight heads, I'm going to be using the proportional system that is seven and a half heads. It's a, that proportional system will give us a more uh, natural, more, uh, a more natural figure, more ordinary, so to say. 
there's different proportional systems depending on what kind of figure you want to uh, you want to draw. And I'm gonna. This is the the eighth head here. But I'm. We're gonna cut this in half here. So there, and I'll number this as well. One, two, three. And uh, yeah, the, these are heads. So I'm just gonna do the, do this on, on these top ones. So you get the idea, right? This, that's the eye line. You know, that, that's what that represents. Uh, like I said, we're gonna be using the seven and a half, seven and a half heads uh, proportional system. So we come down here to seven, and then of course you've got eight. And the and the in this space, the eighth, I'm gonna cut that in half. So these were two inches, uh, two inches wide, two inches tall. So I'm just gonna measure this uh, at the one inch right here. And also on this side. And just to, to differentiate from the other lines, I'm gonna make this a make this a dotted line or a dash a dash line. Make dashes here. Now this represents where the feet, the bottom of the feet are gonna end up. See, that's the, that's gonna be the seven and a half head measurement right there on that dash line. And also you wanna make uh, another, another dash line, you know, I'll, I'll say why later, but at the, this is the six head measurement, right? This here. Uh, we're going to cut this also in half because it, this will become an important uh, landmark also for the figure. So on the six head measurement, we're going to cut this in, in half, one inch, and one inch over here. Make the dash line going across. So this is what you need to get started. Uh, you know, somebody just joined, you know, we uh, went over the proportional system that we're gonna be used for drawing the human figures. Uh, so we did guideline going across the paper because of the size of my paper, I'm using uh, two inch spaces between each line. And then I'm drawing, you know, ovals to represent head measurements. Uh, so let me show you, let me get another paper just to show you how kind of some of the, some of the mistakes that students make. Uh, I'm 
I'm gonna put this here to do some some drawing. Um, so let's say, for example, uh, in uh, I'm gonna I don't want to mess up this paper, so I'm gonna just to make a a demonstration here. I can, you know, see this, I'm doing circles, doing some circles here. Um, and let's say it, it, a lot of people, when they start drawing the figure, you know, sometimes they make it too short. Sometimes they make it too, too, you know, too long, too elongated. Uh, but one, you know, one way to demonstrate how that affects proportions is if I show you how they, let's say how artists, uh, how cartoonists, you know, make uh, cartoon characters, right? Uh, for example, this, you know, if if you make a figure too sh too short, like if you if you only have a, a figure that is three heads tall. Uh, you end up with a, a proportional system that gives you a very cartoonish looking figure. Uh, for example, here, let's say this, this is the body containing the torso and the pelvis. This is the head, you know, this, I don't try, I'm not much of a cartoonist, but I can, you know, just kind of do like a funny little mouse or something. Do that, he's got a big nose. Make a little kind of Mickey Mouse looking. You know, some ears. And then of course he's gonna have his arms here. And then his, his legs. So see, this is the type of uh, you know proportional system that you know cartoonist car cartoonist uh, would be using. You know, so if you don't use enough head measurements, you end up with a with a very funny looking figure. You know. And uh, if you if you do uh, see like in these in, in this the three heads I use here they're kind of coming out these measurements right now the next one I'm gonna do I'm not gonna make them uh, the next figure I want to make a very tall figure uh, but I'm gonna make let's say like uh, I'm gonna put two heads here one two. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And if we use this as a as one head for the, and then where do you where are you gonna cut the 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 rest of the of the body? You know what's gonna be the torso and and the pelvis? You know, so you're gonna end up with a very long looking figure. I mean, if you're doing comic books, cartoon characters, this can help add, you know, more, uh, more interest to your characters, right? Something like that. Uh, also like, uh, you know, fashion designers, they, they do like a 10 head figure. And so that, when you have a, a figure that, you know, that tall, it becomes, you know, a lot more, more graceful, right? So it can, be, it can help those uh, fashion designers, you know, create dresses that kind of, in, and it helps them, you know, drape the, the dress or the outfit on the, on the model. 
and you know they do stuff like this you know long legs are of course more graceful it, it's so I, I guess overall like, it's always better if you're going to make a mistake to make it by increasing the head measurements that the, the figure will be more beautiful you know we, we see a person that has long legs we attribute positive qualities to that to that person more so than with a short person of course uh, but see this is more a lot more graceful because of its long legs and long limbs than this little guy here you can give him a pouch make him a little bit make his legs a little bit fatter you have a belly button there so, I mean, th these are some of the, you know, exaggeration that lead to cartoons and lead to uh, very tall figures, you know. Uh, this, this system that I use is seven and a half. It gives you a more natural, more, you know, common looking figure. You know, I think it's the measurement that applies to most uh, individuals. Now, the measurement is... Uh, it's just to help us make a, a drawing that that looks that looks better. Um, most people are going to be slightly bigger, slightly smaller than the seven and a half heads, you know. So let's say, like when we draw the model, you might say, "Well, he's maybe, you know, shorter than seven and a half heads, or he may be taller, depending who the model is." But don't don't get caught up thinking that he, he doesn't quite fit into the seven and a half head. It's just a basic understanding that's gonna make you, uh, that will allow you to make better drawings. And uh, just to show you now how these measurements are going to help us make the figure, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a demonstration here. And so what's, I mean, what's the point of these lines, right? I mean, I, I kind of did, did those, those other drawings without much help of these guidelines. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how these come in handy. And I, I sent you guys this image on, um, on, on Blackboard, on the announcements. Now this handout and also on, on this side, I think I only send you one side, but I think I only send you this side. But these handouts I kept when I was in uh, taking a class with this artist, I want to give him credit. He's a great artist, uh, John De Martin. He's very, he's a great drawing professor. He's a great artist, great drawing teacher, great drawing instructor. And uh, so these handouts I kept because that's what I was paying for as in, when I was getting my, my degree, you know. And uh, they've come in handy, you know, in, in teaching. Uh, so I'm gonna then, you know, use these to make a, a drawing here and demonstrate how, what, how we're gonna use these head measurements in, in drawing the figure. Uh, and then I'll use, I'll use this one. This is from the Bark book that I send you guys as, as a PDF. Because we're still using the envelope and the blocking method, uh, and I'm going to demonstrate how we're going to use this in combination with the with the envelope and the blocking method to make these make these figure drawings. So we can start getting used to the proportional system. And uh, so, I mean, it, it, the way that I'll do this demo is not the first part of the demo is not so much. Uh, using the the envelope and the block in, uh, and I also just want to discuss some things that are that are that are important once we start to deal with the with the figure with the human figure, and that's also why I've got this handout here, and it has this. I'll send you guys this handout as well. It has uh, it has these two drawings, and I I particularly like this one here because it shows, uh, you know, I've pushed you guys away from using curves. And we're trying to, to use uh, line segments that are straight to construct the, 
our portraits and now to use our figures, but we have to start to kind of become aware of this, of this S curve. It's a, it's not, it's not a, a an S as, as the letter, but it's, it's called an S curve because it does have a similarity. It's a, it's a graceful curve that flows throughout the figure. Uh, and also in this drawing, it has, uh, it shows you the effects of uh, what is called the contraposto or the counterweight. Contraposto means that the, that the, the masses of the body, you know, the rib cage and the pelvis, they counterbalance in each other so that the figure can stand. Uh, and so whatever the pelvis does, see like in, in this drawing, the pelvis, uh, the left side of the pelvis is higher because the weight of the figure is resting on the left leg and the right leg is at rest. That's why it's slightly more bent, more bent. And so the body to balance itself out, the torso does the opposite. See here, the left side of the pelvis is higher. On this side, the right side of the, of the torso is higher. So this creates a very graceful figure. And this is usually when you're standing for, for a while, you know, you'll, you will shift your weight to one leg and after a while you shift it to the other. You're probably not aware of this, but your body's doing this to balance itself out. And it creates a graceful figure. Uh, this, we hardly ever stand like this, you know, perfectly distributing our weight in both legs. And, you know, we try and shift so that we can stand for longer periods of time. Uh, so just you know, start to be aware of this of this S curve. And these curves, these S curves, uh, they flow throughout the body, following the anatomy. And you know, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but that you know, for for the meantime, you just want to be aware of that of the S curve that flows through the through the throughout the human figure. And to start, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw first this make this drawing this is called a reference position you know whenever you see an anatomy book whether for artists or, or for medical students the reference position is this very similar to this i think the reference position it would have the arms you know turn up you know turn outward uh, but to you know to start this to start the drawing uh let me see, let me, let me put this, let me, let me put this right here. So, to, you know, to start this, uh, I'm gonna, you know, be aware of, you know, where different anatomical landmarks are gonna fall in according to these, to these lines and to help me make the drawing look proportionate. Of course, the first head measurement, uh, this is gonna be occupied by the, by the head, you know, of course here. You know, when, when the student is, is confronted with the, with the living, with the living model in, in, a, in drawing class, or even if you're doing a cast drawing of a, that has a, the, the complete figure, it's overwhelming. You might not know where to, where to start. Uh, and so this kind of gives you a, a good starting point. So that's you know that's going to be the our head measurement. Do the do the eye line. And I mean I want to emphasize sometimes students they they think they can just put a head in here like that. Um, let me make it darker here. See, don't do this. 
keep it within the boundaries of the first head measurement. Also, like don't go out, you know, don't go bigger, don't do something like this. Now, again, like when we did the, port, the proportions to the face, you know, just to, this is the top of the cranium. Sometimes, of course, the models will have hair. So the hair, the mass of the hair can go a little bit higher than this. If, if the model has be, a beard, it can go a little bit below that. But yeah, this, you know, this is our high line. Our nose. Mouth line. Let me just give a little bit of detail here so it looks more human. Already know where the ears go. So just a you know generic looking face. So there. And then, you know, looking at this, at this handout, uh, what's gonna help me, you know, draw the figure? Uh, so using these guidelines, at the bottom of the second head measurement, this line, and I look over here, uh, the, the anatomical landmark of the breasts, more specifically these two points. And the scientific name for these two points is not the scientific name, but I guess the medical term for these two points is the memory papilla, which is the medical term for nipples. And I like to use memory papilla because whenever I say that in class, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of the students just kind of smile or like kind of snicker or like, I think it's funny that I'm using the word nipples. <laughs> so I want to refer to them as the memory papilla, like the memory glands. That's you know that's what those are. And so the the second head measurement is always going to fall right there. And so that gives me this space. And see that within that space we have uh, we have the neck, a little bit of the neck here and the shoulders. And these are the pectoralis muscles. The pectoralis comes a little bit below it, but the mammary papilla is right at the second head measurement. Then you've got the clavicles. The trapezius muscle, the deltoid. And see that it's, it's looking, it's looking pretty Realistic, give this guy a little bit of hair. And this is regardless if it's male or, or female. So that's a, at the second, at the bottom of the second head measurement, that is what you're gonna have. And then uh, another landmark is the at the bottom of the third head measurement. And that's gonna be the, the belly button, or I think I believe medical term is the umbilicus. So right here, the third head measurement, you know, take this measurement, it's one, two, three. Eventually we have to learn how to measure these by looking at the model, by doing this. And I'll explain what this is, like, well, like what is this? Makes no sense, right? Like, well, this you have to move your finger and put your arm straight so that you can line this up, line the top with the 
top of the head of the model and then the thumb with the bot on the bottom of his chin. So you can take that measurement. But see, like your arm has to be straight. You can't be like this. And then when you move it down, like move it closer, you have to consistently keep your arm straight. But, I'll, you know, when we have the model, I'll demonstrate in a, in a more clear way. But that's, you know, so that measurement, one head, two, three, and it's going to give you the belly button. And I, I don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of information. Like, I'm, you know, like there's a rib cage in there. Uh, So that's the umbilicus. And I'll do a little bit of the arch of the rib cage. So just a very basic drawing we're doing here. And uh, the fourth head measurement at the bottom of it, you bring it down. You're gonna have the bottom of the pelvis or also what is the, the genital area. And uh, on the, on the also I'll draw the back view. This is gonna be right at where the gluteus Maximus, or more commonly known as the buttocks, that's where they fold in. But in, in the front, it is uh, at the bottom of the pelvis, and of course, depending on the sex, you know, it'll be it'll be covered by you know the general genital area here. So we'll give them a little a little package. The you know the the, the genitals are always uh, are always problematic for the students uh, uh, or for I think in our in, throughout our history they've been problematic uh, if you think of like Michelangelo's David you know he's nude and a lot of those nudes from the Renaissance the the penises uh, they're they are all drawn as if they're like uh, even if it's a, a grown male, they give them like the penis of a child or like a baby penis. And I think that's purely for aesthetic reasons. I think is uh, you know the, you know it gets rather unattractive to look at a fully developed penis. You know, so I think the artists so that it's more acceptable. They just put like a a baby penis on these very muscular men. You know, and it's it just I think purely aesthetic reasons. Um, and so that also the third head measurement, a little bit below that you have uh, <clears throat> these uh, landmarks here that are the, that are the, uh, these are called the anterior superior iliac spine. And it's part of the part of the pelvis. You can see on this drawing, you know, there's there's this. This is the shape of the pelvis. In, uh, it kind of shows you where the pelvis ends, and then the legs are going to start. There's a lot more anatomical details here, but I don't, you know, I don't want to go into those yet. Oh, and, and by the way, you know, like, well, the width of the figure, you know, like, uh, what's, you know, hopefully I drew this correctly. See this, two heads, that is about the width of the shoulders, at, sh at the shoulders. And then what's the width of the pelvis? It should be about one head, see? 
So th these measurements, you know, you can take them uh, and, you know, flip them over and they can really help in, uh, in drawing the width. Of course, only when the figure is perfectly frontal to you. So we're at the fourth head measurement, then the, then you see this here, this dashed line that I made, this is gonna help us place the knees. So the knees are always gonna be at the, remember this is, you know, the fifth, the fifth head measurement, this is the bottom of the fifth head measurement. And then this dotted line is the five and a half, even though it's within the sixth head measurement. The, uh, the knees are, are always gonna be right here, the kneecaps. And believe me, it'll be a challenge to draw the figure just in a very simple format like this, you know, frontally, it'll be a challenge. Uh, and once it starts to turn a little bit, it'll become even harder. So that's gonna be the, where you're gonna have the kneecaps. And then from here, the last head, the last measurement that is of importance here is the seven and a half. And as you can see on this drawing, because it's like, let's say like he's like standing on a stage. So there's like no, foreshortening really happening here. Uh, from here, we're just gonna go, go down. And this is the shape of the foreshortened, you know, feet right here, like the little triangle. They're gonna kind of look like hooves at this point. I'd have to do the toes. And, but right now we just kind of want to focus on understanding these proportions. And then the arms, uh, to do the arms, I'm just gonna do this. He ended up looking like a, like a little boy, you know, maybe the eyes too large. So at the at the four and a half, that's approximately where the 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 arms are gonna end, you know, the, the hands. When I was uh you know, uh, 11 or 12, I had a, I still have this book, it's called the uh, Drawing Comics, The Marvel Way. And I, and I remember learning the proportional system there in that book, uh, because I was interested in drawing superheroes and they would make all their superheroes eight heads tall. And of course, very muscular. But see, this is just like an ordinary figure. So that 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 right there, just like the you know very simple, very basic proportions that will help you make a, a drawing look better, uh, the drawing of the figure look better, making them look more more realistic. And that's the front view. Now, what I want to do, I'm just taking the time here. Uh, I want to make sure that I that I go over the uh, 
the proportions, but the way that they relate to the to the back of the figure. So let me look at a. I think I have another print out here somewhere. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to utilize the remaining time that we have. So you guys can, you know, you can look at this as well here. It has the, the proportions relating to the, to the back of the figure. Uh, but I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna draw, I wanna make this drawing, which is from the Bard book. And it's on, I'm gonna send you guys that PDF. So it's, if you wanna pull it up, it's plate three, number 48. You see, it's a, it's a, the back view. Uh, and I think it'll help me, of course, talk about the, the uh, proportions, the way that they relate to the back of the figure. But I'm also gonna try and draw this using the blocking method. Uh, and also what I like about this is that there's some slight, uh, you know, uh, not much, but there's some slight foreshortening of the stance of the, of the feet. Uh, just to kind of show you how, how, how to deal with something like this. So this is what I'm gonna draw next. And I'll, I'll be, I'll be, uh, Let me put this. Fold this. We can we can see this. They will be working on this drawing, it will answer some of the questions that I that I feel I always get, you know, when, when we transition from the proportions to to moving on to these these drawings. Um, <clears throat> so you know right away by looking at this uh, at the paper and uh, looking at what we have here, it gives you a starting point. Like you know that the figure is going to stay between this line and the and and this one, right? You know that right away. Okay. So that answer that answer that question. Like how how am I going to make this drawing? Where am I where am I going to place? It has to be within these two these two lines, right? Uh, and like, uh, you know, I've, I've been talking to you about uh, picking one line that will describe the whole figure, right? Well, this is, it's standing and it's, I mean, there's uh, the weight of the figure is on the right leg here. So I think this kind of helps me determine that this one line is gonna represent that, that whole figure. Right? And it's going from the from the from the heel all the way to the top of the head. So I have to keep that line between these two. Now, one thing I want I want to do also is uh, uh, figure out the you know the envelope to this. You know, so I, I can do this line here. And then from here to the knee. You see, the knee then becomes important right there. Like, okay, the knee, I know that that's gonna be at the sec, at the at the five and a half. And 
and then now this line to contain the figure. So there we got, we've got that envelope. So one thing that's gonna come in handy here is uh, in drawing the envelope is I know it's gonna, of course, gonna stay between these two lines. And I've got, I have this to help me also, the knee. And what else do I have that can help me? I've got this right here, you know, this. And so, and then also, I mean, I've got other other things like I've got the this other point here at the shoulders, and I I kind of know where the shoulders are, you know, using this drawing, you know, it'll be somewhere here. And we've got the gluteus maximus, you know, the fold of the gluteus maxima, which is at the four. You know, so approximately like right here. So all of those points they are gonna help me, it's gonna make it easier to do the envelopes like that. It's gonna do that, you know, that. And he's, I mean, he's got a big mop of hair so that, that can go off a little bit, you know, maybe all the way up here. And the elbow, see where's the elbows? Like at the almost slightly higher than the three, than the third head measurement. So it's you know one, two, three, so somewhere around here. So there, when you when I when I assign you your homework and you're doing this, I mean, you know, uh, take your time in, in figuring this out and, and document this stage so that I know that you're using, there's some of you that are still not doing the envelope. And see from here, I go down to the knee, which is at the five and a half, right? And that's gonna be the, maybe a little bit of at an angle and then down. So there, that's the, uh, that's the envelope. And then using this, you know, uh, I know that to help me do the, the the blocking in. Well, I know that you know the, the chin is going to be there. Um, I know that that the bottom of the the bottom of the scapula, which is this right here, that's also. If you look at the handout, see this is the bottom of the scapula there. That's at the second head measurement one two. So I know that that's that's gonna help me right there. Uh, see that that's a very useful measurement because that on the front is the is the memory papilla here. And that, uh, that's why I like to, when we start growing the figure to have all these different poses from different angles. So you can see how the proportions relate uh, to one another from the front to the back and to the, and to the side view. What else? Uh, of course, you know, in here, this is the outside, the knee on the outside and then the knee on, on, the, on the inside is gonna be there. So, I mean, that becomes of a, of a great help. And then remember this, this is the part of the pelvis. So that's at, at the bottom, slow, slightly below the third head measurements or somewhere there. So I've got all these points. So before I start to go in there, I'm kind of aiming, kind of deciding where, where I'm gonna go with, with, the, with blocking in. So I can, you know, again, this, 
Let's look at that shape. So that goes somewhere like, it does something like this, right? And then there's this. And as I'm, as I'm blocking in, right? We should take a picture of the whole envelope before you start doing this. And so this is, that's that, right? So it's like something like, and then from the second head to the top of the foot here, something like this. But see, there's like a nice pattern to the pose there. And then this here from the top of the shoulder to this. And this is also, you know, the top of the pelvis, which is here. Again, this triangular wedge with this wedge shape. And where does it go? It goes all the way up here to the bottom of the scapula. Somewhere there. These get a little bit more intricate, you know, kind of to describe the leg. And then here, this negative space, you know, you can simplify it to something like this. And see, it's it's a a good distance from the from the bottom of the pelvis. So there's the bottom of the pelvis at the four, so somewhere here. See there? Now, I, as I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh, it, it looks a little, it looks too wide, you know, compared to this. And of course, I'll make the corrections. Uh, but I feel a lot of people, they, they, uh, they probably get exhausted or their attention span only goes so far. And they're like, they're like, okay, that looks fine. That kind of looks good. And they just stick with this. And then they'll, they'll start adding details. You know, but here, that's where most people make the mistake, like they do the envelope. Most of the beginning students that are learning this method, this is where they make the mistake. They learn, they do the envelope and then they start to block in and they're like, it, they're like, it, it looks fine. But uh, push yourself to make it even, even more, more appropriate or make it or correct it. You know, take some time here, like get up and look, look at it. You know, maybe take a five minute break or uh, and push yourself to to make it more accurate. Like I, I'm, I like, like the first time I did this demo, I, I really, I was kind of just surprised at how, how many of these wet shapes I was able to discover, you know, uh, but I know I've got to, I have to fix some things, right? And that's why I have, see like here, I drew these lines. I, I dropped, I made like a grid, dropping lines to see what, what things line up. See like this, this part of the, this is just the hair, right? This, the shape of the hair. If I drop a line from here, and I'm gonna try and keep it as straight as I can. And I'm, I'm trying to stay away from using, using a ruler. So see that line, 
What does it do? See this? The gluteus has to be it has to be right there. So I have to shave a lot of this gluteus. So I gotta move that. And see, there's this that wedge shape. It goes into this right here. So that's gonna help me fix that. And then also I realized that of course this is way out there. You know, I gotta I have to move this in here a little bit. So just that one line. See that one line has and then see this the uh gastrocnemius, the the uh, the back of the leg here is gonna be within this. You know, this line that I brought down is going to be up, it's going to be over here. I'm going to move that in. And see, I was way off. See, now it's starting to look more like, now this leg looks too, too wide. So dropping that line, you know, it came in very, very handy. And then see, I've got this other line here from the, from, from behind the ear, going all the way down. It goes right into the heel, right? So it is pretty much this line, that one line that goes through the whole figure. I'm trying. See, I'm just focusing on making a straight line. I'm, you, you have to practice this, you know, just uh, don't resort to the ruler, it's gonna, Trust that you will develop uh, the patience and the you know the skill to draw a straight line. I mean, it's not it's not perfect, but yeah, I use I put my my little finger here to help me kind of to guide myself. So that's this line, right? So that helps me do this, and then that's gonna come out. See the knee comes away from it. So the knee is gonna be here and that's good. And I could push this a little bit further back here. So I think that that leg is looking pretty accurate the gluteus maximus up to the third head measurement and almost here to the second head for the scapula. So see, th this is looking good here. I like how that's, how that's turning out. And then if I drop a line here from the, from the front of the face, which I think it's like right here. That's gonna give me the, the other heel, the left one. So that that is pretty close there. That, that's a good measurement. But see this, the knee can now probably come in a little bit more here. And that tells me like, see, I've got this other line that goes through the knee. So 
So this is my new location for the day. Let me erase this. So from here, I can go up. And I use this line to help me draw this straight line. And it's not, it's as, as perfect as I can make it, right? That should, that should fix that. Now, I on purpose really, I mean, I've done this a bunch of times already and I could have probably nailed it the first time, but just for, for demonstrating to you guys, like I made it really wide. And then to demonstrate how I can use these Dropping these lines and also the anatomical landmarks out the back of the figure to help me place the figure in, in its in its right locations. Now I can erase I do a lot of erasing here. What are we doing on time? Okay, we got, we're good. Then I can, I can finish this, and then I'll post the video so that you guys can review it and do some of the. And I've got other videos from past semesters that that you can keep checking. Now I have like ten minutes, right? Uh, I, I want to finish the, you know, the figure here. I don't think I have enough time. So these these drawings are uh, these, you know, the the bark drawings. I mean, they're great for. I mean, they're simplified. They they uh, they're very nicely simplified and make this process the process of learning how to draw a lot a lot easier. And remember, like keep your, your pencil sharp, you know, like this was, it became too, too much like a stump, right? And my lines were getting, as you can see, they're like very, very blurry, and very thick. And see, this is, this is an ebony pencil. And overall, I, I, I like the ebony pencil and, and uh, I have to press harder so that you guys can see it on, on the on the monitor on, on the recording uh, but it, it just be, it becomes harder to erase uh, so look I'm gonna go over the figure a couple of times and and uh, you know continue to you know kind of correct the the block in shape I can bring this out a little bit more. And then also at this point, I can, you know, I, I look here, that is the bottom of the chin. So I know that it's somewhere here, the, the shoulders, right? And I think this sticks out a little bit more making the adjustments that I, that I need. And see on, on the feed here, like, like I, like I had mentioned, you know, this dotted line is the, uh, where you're gonna place the bottom of the feet. Now, this, it, it kind of shows some of the problems or some of the issues that happen when you're, you're looking at the model. One foot is gonna be closer to you. The, and no matter how the model is standing, you're never really gonna have this when the model is, is present. So like in this case, uh, 
the left leg is closer to us. So that's gonna, it's gonna come down a little bit below the seven and a half head measurement. So maybe like right here. And the right one is gonna be slightly on top of it. Now, I'm exaggerating it here because that, that's always an issue that students are like, like, what do I do here? Because when you're looking at the model, there's four short, you know, models in, in, right there in front of you. So one of them, you have to split that difference. Like, you, you can't put both at the, on the same plane because then it'll look like they're on a stage. It's not like, it's not natural. It's not a natural view. And see, this is, remember, this is the fourth head. That is the bottom of the pelvis. That is where you have the fold of the, of the gluteus, gluteus maximus. So I'm just trying to finish this here. And it'll be, I'm just going to assign you one drawing and we'll check it, we'll check it tomorrow. Because it is intimidating and overwhelming drawing the, drawing the figure. The first time we draw the figure. And I can now also add some of the details of the anatomy within the figure, you know, the, the spine. See, now I think it might look a little too thin. I can, I, I can, you know, uh, make them a little thicker and a little bit here. But see how many times I've, I've drawn him, you know, how many times I've gone over the shape and the contour. In, it, in every, every time I, I draw him, it gets more, more and more accurate. I think that looks fine up here. I think it's the legs that seem a little too thin. I'm gonna add more, a little bit more mass to it. Do you guys have any questions? Gabriela, Samantha.
You know, remember, you're going to erase, make your corrections. I'm gonna move this a little bit so I can see it better. So that it's more frontally towards me. And also something I, I uh, forgot, you know, to mention here. See that the pelvis, this is the leg that has the weight, so it's doing this, right? And even though he's got his arms crossed, the shoulders, the torso is doing this. This is a good example of the like, contraposto. And I know that that term, you will be, you will be uh, asked to define it when you take an art history class. And that's one of the, that is one of the developments that the Greeks brought to, to sculpture. If you look at Egyptian sculpture, it's always, they're always, you know, they're, they're, they're like this, this other guy. They're just like standing with their, with the weight equally distributed on both legs. And the shoulders are also just, you know, equally uh, symmetrical. And that's, that gives their work a lot more, a lot more uh, realistic and natural look to it. I think he was still too thin, so I can add more, more mass to him here. And that's, I mean, that's looking a lot better. This, there, the, the arm, that line there. So after class, I'll post the drawings that you have to do. I mean, you're gonna follow the same method using the, the lines on the paper. Make sure that those lines are straight. Otherwise, this is not gonna work out. Now, the, the, at this point, I'm, I'm, I'll mention to you, there's foreshortening to the, to the head here because it's like the person that was making the original drawing was, was looking up. So this can, at this point, I can say that the chin is probably lower than, than this here, than, the, than this head measurement. So there, I think that's, I think that's a good demo there. 
And let me just darken this, the spine, the line of the spine here. Scapula. And that is, uh, we still have, I think two minutes left, but that's, that's the class for today. And I would encourage you to ask me any questions before I end the class, but you don't have to. <laughs> All right, guys, if you don't have any questions, it's very fun. Bye, Good thank you. <clears throat>